you have been summoned on a journey by Trinobite and Virgin Games to a place where mysteries will unfold, questions will be answered, and unthinkable acts committed. Deep in the heart of Oregon, lurking amidst the quaint bed and breakfast dens of a small one-horse town they call Jacksonville, we find a company that has changed the face of global entertainment forever. The company's name is Trilobite. Well, we decided that there was a big new medium out there which involved CD-ROM. And this big new medium, CD-ROM, needed a definitive product. And the seventh guest seemed to fit into that. We needed something with power and passion and drama and story and animation and graphics and multimedia and sound overlays. And we were the people to do that. We were chosen by, by God. Trilobite is the brainchild of Graham Devine and Rob Landeros, who met in the summer of 1988 while working for Virgin Games. Both computer fanatics from a young age, Devine was actually expelled from school for taking an unauthorized vacation to finish programming his first video game, the classic coin-op pole position. So I took a week off school and finished it up. And it looked pretty good and Atari was happy and every, everything was good. Went back to school with a note saying I'd taken a week off school to finish up this game. Didn't lie. Um, it didn't say I had the flu, which is what I should have done. And took it into school, and uh, everyone in school went, okay, you're expelled. Both Divine and Landeros drew the upon their colorful pasts and interests in the macabre to breathe life into the seventh guest. And uh, the whole horror genre really appealed to us, doing an interactive version of Clue combined with David Lynch-like effects. <laughs> and this is what we basically outlined to Matthew. We have this house that's going to be haunted, and the villain's going to be an evil toy maker, and his house is going to be filled with evil toys. With a groundbreaking game like The Seventh Guest, it was necessary to enlist the talents of the professional horror novelist, Matthew Costello. As I said, when I got involved to write the script for The Seventh Guest, it was essentially another writing job. Writers, of course, like a lot of people create a field and exist when they freelance from job to job. It was a nice job, it was an interesting job, but nothing, I thought, of unusual note. Uh, it's only when I got involved and I saw what, what Trilobite was actually up to that I realized that something, there was potential for something extraordinary here. Most people who write novels are used to telling one story. They tell the story in sequence from beginning to end with two or three viewpoints. And that's a nice, neat way to work. You can just sit down every day and move the story a little bit further. Uh, my first writing was uh, for games, doing interactive game novels and then uh, interactive role-playing adventures for Batman, uh, for games like Call of Cthulhu, which is a horror game, for uh, science fiction interactive novels. So I was used to handling multiple plots. So when this came up, it was something I was familiar with, cutting and dicing, but I wasn't prepared for was the fact that it was really, really had to be a film script in about 50 or 60 sections. Originally, we were, we were going to try to uh, find a Gothic-style Victorian house and uh, take cameras in there and uh, take a bunch of photographs uh, of the interiors, kind of a 360-degree pan of the uh, interior of various rooms. But um, 
that became unfeasible. And it wasn't until um, um, Robert Stein came around uh, and showed us how we could uh, render, that it was truly feasible to render a room in, in 3D Studio. Okay, this is the first module of 3D Studio's five modules. This is called the 2D Shaper. In it, we can create a 2D shape like this circle. We import the circle into the next module called the 3D Lofter. This circle can be moved along a path. In this case, we have a straight path in which we will move our circle. A preview will give us an example of what the object would look like in 3D. Once we've decided to make our object, we can move that object and all other objects we make into the 3D editor. We can put them together in order to create anything we want, such as this chair. Small objects like this can be rendered in a relatively small amount of time, uh, approximately uh, 30 to 40 seconds for a complete 24-bit image like this. However, uh, rooms such as the foyer and hallway system in the seventh guest are extremely large and will take up to 20 to 40 minutes per frame to render. And there's over 1,000 frames for that whole system. I knew Graham and Rob uh, for several years working at Virgin Games. Uh, I had left Virgin and moved to Seattle. And um, they had informed me that they were planning to form their own company. So when the opportunity arose, I jumped to it. Um, Having known them, I felt I could work uh, competently with them. And uh, they were originally um, intending to shoot the entire game uh, with video. Um, they were aware that I was working with uh, 3D Studio and rendering, and they asked to see some samples of what I could do. And uh, I produced uh, one room, uh, a room that was never used in the game. And uh, it was uh, satisfactory enough to convince us that uh, we could get, get by uh, quite well using the 3D program for the entire house while still using video for the actors. Action! I have always wanted to be president. Possibly president of the bank. Hmm. Playing with staff will be a breeze. I will surely win. Cut. What My name did? is, is Deborah Mason. And um, I directed the live action for the seventh guest and I acted as the character Martin Burden. Reach out with the camera. Roll your eyeballs. This particular type of acting is a new technology. Feature film acting has been around for about a hundred years and is a series of, of angles, close-ups on the person. It's almost as if the actor is thinking the situation. With this particular type of shooting, we had the camera locked down. Everything was from a, a long shot, a long angle. And it was um, difficult getting the facial emotion across. And instead of just a, a simple darling, we would have to use whole body movements. Darling! Similar to that with everything. Um, in that way, it was similar to stage and having an audience. The most difficult part was staying on our mark, cueing the actors to work around different positions on a stage with your virtual reality, your imagined furnishing. We had a difficult time not walking through things all the time. Ah! Ah! Hey, maybe we really can do this. When we first got in touch with the fat man, we didn't know who the heck he was. And, you know, we didn't know that he was larger than life or that he was such a, you know, musical genius. Or... We didn't know he'd have such a big impact on the project. We thought he'd do the music. He didn't even know who he was. He didn't even know who he we was. We unleashed then. his greatest potential. Here, my head is full of music. <laughs> Here I am. This is my team. I'm the fat man. Seventh guest. Dave Govett. Wing commander. Lots of stuff. Joe McDermott. Baseball, lots of other stuff. Kevin Phelan just sits around. I've got a piano for, for one character. I've got an oboe for another character. I've got a muted trumpet for another character. And they're all reflecting the personality of the character. The muted trumpet is sexy. The oboe is kind of doddering. Uh, the, uh, the piano is a piano bar. Uh, 
the, the, there's a circus, there's an organ like from a circus sideshow, and that's for the music, musician. He's a mysterious guy, or he wants to be a mysterious guy, so it's not really mysterious. <laughs> pseudo mysterious, you know, pseudo mysterious. It's a, it's a musical style, really. Leaving the fat man in Austin, Texas, we returned to Medford, Oregon, where the sound effects and audio post-production were handled by sound designers Greg Hayes and Webb Stoughton at Stoughton Studios. Well, you know, this, uh, this project's been pretty incredible. The sound design on it was, was huge, to say the least. All the sound effects we had to create, it was, it was much like uh, creating sound effects for, for a movie. Uh, first step, uh, of course, yeah. is just to, to break down the script, go through the script with a fine-tooth comb, break it all down. And, and that, that process is real important that you identify all the, all the sonic events that the uh, scriptwriter uh, was, was envisioning and, and get those clearly in mind. Again, the texture that they were envisioning and that the creators are envisioning. And then from there, yeah. begin... Uh, Greg, Greg would issue me lists of, of sound effects and I would go in the script and see how the sound effects plugged in. And then we would literally go and say, okay, we have these effects already available to us. Let's use these, but these are the ones that have to be created. For instance, uh, some of the effects we did, um, one, one little sequence we did, we took a, uh, uh, a coconut and we broke this coconut into, into multiple pieces trying to get a, a great head cracking sound. So when one of the guys gets slammed up against the wall, his head cracks. So it gets back to that thing of you create a very deep, rich environment for each of these areas. And, and that's the process of it's a layer at a time and you've got to know when to stop. You know, you can, you can overbuild certain areas and so you've got to find that uh, uh, balance. We'd, we'd go in and we'd look at the rooms and we'd say, okay, we have a room here that's, you know, what's a, the estimated diameter of this room? And what's, is it got carpet on the floor? Is it wood on the floor? Or what do the ceilings look like? And we would uh, design the, the uh, delay settings or the reverb settings so that, uh, or the echo setting, so this this room would have this believable decay time. And this room doesn't even exist. I mean, that's just so yeah. strange. It's just it's a it's an abstract room, but yet we, you know, you, you it, it is a real room. You have to believe it is real. You, you're the one. I'm gonna leave this. Don't, don't run away, please. Don't run away. Don't go. Don't go. Oh, no, don't go. Bringing all these elements together and fitting them into two CDs requires the use of a relatively new technology known as digital compression. Well, for the seventh guest, really, I think it's all hinged on compression technology. Uh, we take full motion digital video and uh, a relatively high res screen, 640 by 320, and we compress it. And uh, if you look at the originals, you know, the original screens that we start with, they're 600K per frame. And we bring that down to you know, less than 30K per frame so you can have full motion video streaming off of a relatively slow CD-ROM drive. When we started this project, there wasn't any full motion video, there wasn't um, digital movies that were playing on computers anywhere. Uh, we were really pioneering into that area um, with you know, handling audio, handling video, handling all that. There was no tools that could handle a high resolution screen. And there was a number of animators out there that were low res, but all of our images were in high res. So a lot of the tools that we use here are completely proprietary. Basically, <clears throat> there were there were no tools for doing the seventh guest uh, when we started out on this project. And uh, fortunately, some bright ones came along and what wasn't available, brand made. While creating such an avant-garde software product proved challenging, Divine and Landeros expressed no regrets for undertaking this highly anticipated multimedia endeavor. In fact, everyone involved with the making of the seventh guest seemed very optimistic about the future of the industry. So we now leave you with some of their predictions for where this new medium will take us. It's all a little bizarre right now. It can't become mass whilst it's so bizarre. I think as the next few months, not even years go by, that there's going to be such an explosion in the CD-ROM technology that uh, that is how you're going to buy games. Versions of guests and follow-up trial by products will, I'm sure, find their way into all those platforms also.